Congratulations, you've installed VS Code as your development environment for C Sharp. But to really make it a great developer experience, I'm going to show you the six extensions I always install. First up is the obligatory C Sharp extension from Microsoft called OmniSharp, and it provides the ability to compile your code, integrate with the debugger so you can set breakpoints, debug your code interactively. But it also adds IntelliSense, so when you hit the dot, it shows you a list of available methods and arguments, etc. It compiles your code in the background, and so it's going to give you error, warning, information, squiggles, the little underlines, as you can see here. In this case, the argument is unnecessary. Unfortunately, there's a really useful ability it has, but it isn't turned on by default. You need to go to the extension settings and turn it on yourself. I'm going to show you that a little bit later on once we install all the extensions. Next up is a C Sharp extension called C Sharp Extensions, which is a bit confusing. There are several variations listed, so make sure you pick the correct one. It's the most popular entry with nearly 500,000 downloads and currently at version 1.7.3. Once installed, it gives you an extra menu option when you right click inside the file explorer. It allows you to very quickly add a new class, interface, enum, strut. There's quite a few different options and it saves you having to manually create the file, give it the correct name and so forth. In this example, I'm gonna add a class. You enter its name, hit return. It's gonna generate the file and add some appropriate boilerplate code. I find this a really big time saver when you're working on big projects and you're constantly adding and cranking out the code. If you're doing unit testing, and most people are these days, then you're definitely going to need the .NET Core Test Explorer. When installed, this gives you a nice little icon on the activity bar at the bottom. It looks a bit like a test tube. And the extension itself will scan your file structure for any test projects, and then it will list out all the individual tests in a little side form. This makes it really easy to see your tests. You can hit run at any time, compile, see the results, and it just makes it way faster to deal with unit testing than it is doing it via the command line as you normally would. Next up is Roslinator. This is a code analyzer with more than 500 different analyzers and refactorings built in. By default, it's turned off. So after installing, you need to go to the command palette and open its configuration file. Now you can see here that I've already turned on all the refactorings and all the analyzers by setting these two entries to true. Now don't forget that once you change this file, you have to restart in order to get these changes to be applied. You can't expect to just do save and have it automatically applied. You can go down this long list in the file and set on or off your individual analyzers and refactorings. But what I recommend you do is you start off with them all turned on and then over time, ones you find aren't helpful, they're annoying, then go in and turn them off. And over a short time, you'll find that you settle down to a good number that provide value but aren't too distracting. Here is some example code, and we can see the impact of turning on all the analyzers. The problems tab at the bottom, it's showing us a single warning and then multiple information messages. The first warning is telling us that the class isn't marked as static, even though it only contains a static method, which is a good point. Many of the analyzers are about formatting, formatting the code. And you can see that the first and second information messages are about the fact we don't have a blank line in a place where it thinks we should have one. If you click on the message, it often gives you a little light bulb, which shows that you can use a code fix to solve the problem immediately without you having to do it manually. So by using the light bulbs, we can fix up all the issues and then pass all of these analyzer checks. If you're working in a larger organization, having a standard set of these analyzers enabled is a great way to standardize the formatting and make sure that the code adheres to certain standards that you want to define in your company. Our fifth extension is called Better Comments, and who doesn't want better comments in their code? In this case, we're going to show you a multi-line comment. And depending on the character or the string you put at the start, it will change the coloring of the line. So here we have just a star that's going to give us a slightly brighter green color. If we have an exclamation mark, well we treat that as a warning and it's going to come out bright red. 
a question mark is treated as informational, so that's blue. And you can also have text. So in this case, to do is going to come out uh, kind of an orange color. This is pretty useful and makes our comments really stand out and really inform the user of what's going on. And it's not just a multi-line comment. You can also do this for single line comments as well, like this. These are just the defaults. You can go to the settings for the extension. You can add more colors. You can change what character causes those colors to occur. If you don't like the to do, you could change that to something else or get rid of it entirely. So it's fully configurable. So it's really useful. Great thing to standardize on within your project so that everybody gets the same appearance and feel within their code base. Let me show you a problem that can be fixed by enabling an option in the C-sharp extension. Here I'm going to get rid of the using. And by doing that, you can see that string builder is no longer known about. And if I try and do a new string builder, it can't provide any suggestion because it doesn't know where string builder is defined. Go to settings, go to the settings search bar, enter enable import, select C-sharp configuration. And there we go, we can see enable import completion, hit the checkbox, and then it will ask you to restart OmniSharp so that it can be applied. Do that, and now we can have a look at the code and see the difference it makes. This time, String Builder is recognized, it's listed. On the right hand side, you can see that it knows the namespace system.text where it comes from. And if we select this, it's going to add a using statement at the top of our code. So we don't have to memorize the namespace of every class that we use. We can get suggestions for all the common classes that we are likely to use quite often. There we go, six extensions and an extra setting, and you've got a pretty good development environment to get cracking with. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If so, subscribe, like, tell all your friends, and I will see you next time.